Welcome back to Frost City Casement, this is Zed. Today we're going to be talking as a quick update towards SoFi. Now we did talk about SoFi before, my last video is in the description below, but hopefully today we're going to be able to get you new updates relating towards this one and what I think about this one. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So, so fine. Now this one here actually gave good results overall and we've able to see in terms of the last presentations, all their earnings information, their summary results and how they still have massive growth overall. I think the only thing that was actually a bit of a drawback is their next quarter guidance might not be as strong as some people wanted, but nonetheless, it wasn't a downgrade from the overall year. In fact, the total guidance is going to be profitable for 2021 one as the impact even off covid isn't really impacting this one negatively in that sense at this point in time and you're able to see that their annual growth and their contribution profit and adjusted ebi tda is going to be positive for 2021's guidance and you're able to still see that they expect strong continuation growth between quarter 3 2021 um between a lower of 245 million on the adjusted net revenue and 255 million on quarter 3 2021 on the higher part and you're able to see that that is still higher than the previous guidance for quarter 2 2021's investor guidance and it's still somewhere close towards the adjusted net revenue actual of quarter 1 2021 and really what we're talking about here is why did it continue on to tank even though they've actually seen a good amount of growth so we're going to try to address that today, but in terms of press and news, there's nothing here that we can talk about that will be uh, more of an addition towards this one. But we're able to take a look into some of the recent SEC filings. So this one here was actually last night on the 16th of August 2021. And the prospectus here isn't really showing you things that we didn't know about before on June 24th, 2021, even though it was published on the 16th of August, 2021. And it does talk about 471 million shares of common stocks, including as well part of warrants. And uh, well, actually a lot of it is warrants and just preferred stocks for shares. And around 118 million of that will be sold by Delaware Project 10 LLC. So a lot of people perhaps could be fearing possible dilution, but this was actually mentioned a while ago in terms of a June 24th, 2021 prospectus. So I don't see how this is not priced in already. And on another point, point the other SEC filings are mainly just relating towards the earnings. So there's nothing here to talk about. But we can move on towards institutional buyers. But before doing so, please make sure to click the subscribe button on the bottom right corner. I really appreciate that. And turn on notification buttons on for this channel. Also, don't forget to drop a like to this video. And you can click show more to join our Discord totally free in the description below. Now, in terms of the institutional buyers, we're able to see that some companies actually added some shares today. So on the 17th, for instance, Carolina's Wealth Consulting has added around 4,100 shares and Luxor Capital added around almost 400,000 shares. And in terms of insiders, we don't see much activities going on. And on the short interest part, you're able to see that short volumes are sitting closer towards 40%, which means that almost at any given point, the volumes of or the share volumes ratio between the total volume is sitting almost at 40% or around 0.4 in volume prospect. So it just basically means there's high activities in terms of the short volume. The short flow appears to be around 23%, which means that this one is heavily shorted in that sense or one of the most heavily shorted stocks currently existing in the market. Now, in terms of technical analysis, we're able to see on a one month, one day perspective is that the current price point is dropping significantly. There's not a lot of supports below this, and we're going to really take a look at that. There's high selling activities, and that's seen by the William percent R, which is very similar to the relative strength index, showing very high significant uh, selling activities, more sellers than buyers, really. And on the MACD, you're seeing a negative reversal that attempted to start today, and it's still in continuation. Whether we see a bounce back and a rejection of this negative reversal it could be possible, but currently what seems to be happening is that it's continuously being beaten down. 
Now we can take a look into some significant supports and resistances from a Fibonacci retracements part on the significant supports and resistances because institutional buyers really care about these lines. You're able to see that the resistance is at 1436 for this one, followed by 1702, 1916, 2131, 2436, and around 2825. The only support for this one appears to be around the 1005 level. Now, if we were just to go ahead and take a look into significant supports and resistances, just on a usual level, we're able to see that the next support technically would be somewhere closer to the 1308 level. And then below there is the 1260, below there 1198, and then going down to 1131, 1083, and then 1044, and then the $10. The current resistances, there is a few. For instance, the 1410 seems to be an important resistance, then the 1483, then going on to 1559, and then around the 1601, 1660, going down or up to actually to 1753, 1795, around 1860, and then going to 1978, 2049, 2164, and then upwards to 2277, 2369, 2437, and around 2519. And then comes to the question to add, what do you actually think about the stock? Now, from my own perspective, that this stock is being beaten down for almost no reason, even though their growth is really advancing. Why are people still considering that this one should be put at a lower cost if it really expanded and at that cost around $30, they were expecting lower growth than what we're seeing right now? So it could be in relations towards some hype that is currently cooling down or just that the market currently for this sector is slipping down. But you're able to see that selling volumes are almost at an all time high. One of the highest ever selling volumes. And in terms of this one here, I think this is mainly going towards panic selling. And I do think that in the coming couple of weeks or so, this one will find its legs back up and slowly climb back up. Now, the question is where or at what level will it start finding that leg up? I do really anticipate that probably around the $13 level to the $12.55 or around the $12 level, that would be the range where it starts seeing a bounce back up. And in terms of this one here, I think those are addition points. And I do really wish that this one does jump back forward because of everyone who bought around above the $20. What do you think about this sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day. Now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that gives picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just things we think about, swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here, and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one. Feel free to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day.